This is the Own It Show, where we tell stories of how everyday people made ownership theirs to create extraordinary success. Welcome back to the Own It Show Coach Conversations. I'm Justin. I'm Elise. Welcome to the show. And guys, I know you've heard from me over and over and over again about health optimization, different biohacks you can do, uh, different focuses and ownership that we need to take within your health and why health is really, truly the new wealth and how it's driving your performance in every way, shape and form. And so I figured you guys were sick of hearing from me. And so I brought on uh, the UK's leading biohacker and very well known in this space, uh, Tim Gray. And I am, I'm so excited to have him with us today to, to really hear his story and how focusing in this area has truly changed his life, but also to allow him to provide his knowledge to you guys on some different things that maybe we haven't spoken about before, or he'll say it in a different way so that it's actually something that is something that's taken into adoption. So Tim, again, thank you so much for taking the time and energy to, to join us today and, uh, and share your knowledge with our crew. Thanks for having me. So Tim, kind of give us some, some guidance into how you became interested in this space. It's, not, um, it's obviously become a, a very sexy field. Uh, there, everybody wants to be a, uh, a knowledge broker and a, um, uh, a believer in this space, but it's another thing to have truly lived it, experienced it, taken full ownership of it, dove deep into it, being obsessed with it, and being the leader in the space that's now providing a lot of that knowledge that's being uh, being sh shared around the world. Mm -hmm. um, it's really basic, actually. <laughs> I I just got ill, and um, and uh, this is before biohacking or health optimization was, I guess, fashionable. Um, also popular, there wasn't bulletproof coffee everywhere, and but all these things and Instagram wasn't full of health influencers. It was, uh, it was literally just pictures of people on vacation, but um, yeah, I got ill and um, it got to the point where the doctors just shrugged their shoulders and said, there's nothing wrong with you. And, um, and, you know, after about a year of this going on from being, you know, uh, I guess a very busy business guy to being sick, like one of my employees, I always felt used excuses when they're off sick. Um, I realized what, you know, chronic health issues were. Um, and on the way back from the doctor's clinic, you know, you know, I kind of thought this is enough. So I started researching and, um, and I dealt with it like a, a business issue. So for instance, in my company, if I had to strategize or had to pull the team in on things, I'd have a pack of post-it notes. I'd write everything down, get the team to stick them up on the walls, put them into hierarchy of how we should problem, you know, do problem solution on everything. And I just did that with my health. And I realized that everything traced back to one issue, which was actually mercury poisoning for me. Um, I had a mouthful of amalgam fillings. I'd been eating sushi pretty much all day, every day for years. And, um, and I realized I had mercury poisoning. So I went down the route, the route uh, of mercury detoxification, which was one thing which caused a whole load of other issues. Um, but eventually it came out that I had genetic component to it as well, which is why I didn't detox mercury as well as some other people. So really it was hearing a whole load of, having a whole load of symptoms and thinking in a business problem solution mindset of how to fix these things. And then after about five years of, of doing that, um, working on my health and constantly improving it, realizing that, you know, I'd been operating at probably 70% for many years without even realizing it before I was ill, realizing that when I optimize my health and do some of these things that I can perform so much better. And then I kind of like got hooked on it. And that's when I heard about Bulletproof Coffee back in 2015-ish, somewhere like that, maybe 2014. And um, then I realized that I was a biohacker um, without even realizing what biohacking was. So it kind of progressed from there pretty much. And I continued to optimize my health. Um, I went to the Bulletproof Conference in 2017, uh, realized that there's a massive community of people. It wasn't just me that this is this crazy health freak doing things and tracking things and doing liver flushes and gut cleanses and all this stuff. 
Um, came back to London, realized there wasn't any community, started a meetup group, which grew to pretty big very quickly, like 500 people within a few months. Um, but a lot of people didn't really resonate with the word biohacker just because of, you know, it's quite, it seems quite techy. So I just updated the name to be Health Optimization and Biohacker London. And then the group grew to thousands. And then I started a summit <laughs> and the rest is history, as they say. What, what a great story, Tim. And the, the ownership that you, you continued to prove through this entire process is evident. One of the things that we talk about, Justin and I often talk about, is how ownership is different. And you said exactly that. You're, you're going out, you realize before biohacking was even a thing that you're a biohacker. There wasn't even a community, so you decided to start your own. One of the things I'm really curious about, and I think our listeners would love to hear, is the mindset component of this. Now, as you're going through this, this is something that could easily throw many people off. I can't figure out what's wrong. It's something that is so demotivating. How did you continue to wake up every day to say, nope, I'm going to, I'm going to figure this out and continue to push through to ultimately where you're at today? What a great question. Um, I'm stubborn, but not necessarily in a negative sense so much. More persistent, I guess, would be probably like one, I don't want to give up. Um, two, I um, got to a point where I'd been chronically ill for so long and I had so many issues. Actually, I was standing in a hospital after having an operation, dripping with blood um, at the time. And it was like, I was at the edge. I was like, I, was, I remember holding on to, I couldn't sit down. Um, I was dripping with blood and I holding onto the bed thinking, I can't do this any longer. And I looked out the window. It was a beautiful summer's day. I was in a private hospital room overlooking Lord's Cricket Ground. Um, and I was just like, it could be a lot worse. I was like, I'm very, very lucky to be alive. And it could always be worse. And mm, let's just enjoy every day I can. So for me, it's the drive of saying we have one chance or one life on this planet and you want to make the most of it. And what do I have to do to make the most of it? You know, um, and, and I think the mindset of always looking on the bright side, but not tricking yourself <laughs> and being still being a realist is, is really important. So for me, it's just the sheer need to enjoy this existence um, and to thrive. And then, yeah, that's basically it. I, I really can't put it into words better than that. It's again, I, I love that concept. And, and I mean, the story is so uh, it, it resonates so heavily with me because um, I've got five or six stories of the same thing where it was my health that had deteriorated multiple times. Um, doctors continue to say, hey, you're fine, you're fine, you're fine, only to understand that uh, I'm not fine. I, there's nobody that knows our bodies better than ourselves. And if we're being truly um, aware of what's going on and truly uh, listening to what our body's telling us, we're going to understand that, hey, something isn't right. And uh, I'm curious to know what was it within you that continued to make you push forward and say, hey, all these doctors are incorrect. These people who are uh, have years of experience, have years of education, are glorified by society as the the leaders in the space and are telling me that I'm wrong but yet I know that there's something not right here what gave you the confidence and the um the clarity to continue to keep seeking answers but ultimately to take it upon yourself mm -hmm. it's very hard thing to answer um i mean i think everyone thinks they're smarter than everyone else in some way like everyone like for instance you know when you see a, a car accident for instance i'm talking to myself here you see a car accident you go yeah but i'd be more diligent than that or if someone trips over in the street and you go oh hot, that wouldn't happen to me and then when it does you're like oh yeah yeah whatever um and so i think when it comes to some of these doctors 
And I've been in psychology, or should I say, I studied psychology and applied it for many, many, many years, over 20 years actually, and have started, scaled and sold multiple companies. And so I like to think that I'm able to do solve problems quite well. That doesn't mean that I think that I'm better than anyone else. I don't, but everyone does kind of have this, well, I think differently approach. So when I'm sitting in front of a doctor that doesn't necessarily understand my issue as well as I do, he might from a biochemistry, biochemical uh, point of view, but not necessarily the history and all the intricacies. I'm sitting there thinking, mm, he doesn't know exactly what I'm talking about here. Now I can do better. And, and I think that's what it held down to. You know, it's like mm, a very good friend of mine, a well-known surgeon and one of our speakers, actually, I said to him once, how did you get this home? It's on the side of a, a hill. It's a beautiful glass fronted. It looks over the whole of the town. You know, you've got absolutely everything in life you could ever possibly wish for. And he said, I went to the bank and said, I'm having this house. How do I make it happen? He didn't say, you know, oh, I, I don't earn enough or I don't have enough. He said, how do I make it happen? And I think that's the mindset that I like to be in. It's like, there is a way around everything. It's just a matter of finding it. In fact, that's one of the most guiding questions of my whole life. Um, and so when it came to my health, it's just like, there's a way around it. What is it? Not, oh, I have to put up with this or, oh, I have to, you know, live like this or, oh, I've got a bad knee and you know, I'm going to have to live with a bad knee for the rest of my life and make peace with it. It's like, no, I'm going to fight my way out of it. When you first started getting these answers and it was, hey, there's nothing wrong with you. You continue to have this drive to continue to take ownership, to continue to say, hey, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to find a way around this. What were your first steps that you took to seek clarity in these spaces to get more answers? Hmm. I just started researching online every resource I could. And I think if you look at um, medical funded sites, <laughs> you don't know. You don't know who's funded them and whether you can trust them. So if you start looking at forums, you know, and then this is where I think big data comes in because, for instance, sleep studies are great. They have 50 to 100 people in them. They've been funded. They might be biased. Whereas when you have an aura ring, for instance, it's got hundreds of thousands of people on using it and you get to see big data, which tells you, you know, a more of an unbiased view. So when I look at forums, I would look at forums about this problem and look at the patterns and then know what I think is right or not. And then look at the medical sites to see if they actually linked up with that to see that I wasn't going mad. So it was just always searching for more data and piecing it all together. And I guess in a kind of a mind map, like a spider graph on the wall, set in post-it notes and bringing it all together and looking at what I should fix in what order. So it's just the sheer, <laughs> sheer determination and study and looking at the, the data the best I could. And I think that's why biohacking does so well because of the data itself It's like, if you, you know, start wearing blue blocking glasses three hours before bed and all of a sudden you see your deep sleep double, I mean, it's pretty, pretty obvious there's, you know, uh, causation there. And you do that over the space of two weeks in your own data and it might not work for someone else. And that's, you can't really push back against that. So I think, you know, in terms of world, real world data in each of these areas, I think you can't beat it. Right. And it's, it's clear that in everything that, that you are trying to bring to light. It's something that worked for you and is improving your health and, and helping the, those tips and tricks are things that are helping others as well. The other thing that I noticed in what you're saying is through your story, there's a clear before and after. There was a pain point, which was you getting really sick, becoming very ill, figuring out that it's mercury poisoning, trying to find a way through that. But again, there's a, a clear before and after. Now, that's essentially what we call ownership is once you go through this really difficult point in your life and come out of it with the strong mindset, the success, everything that you have today, it's essentially making the best of a situation that could have completely torn you down. Talk to us a little bit about life, how life has changed for you since then. Cool. You're full of the good questions today. Not the usual, not the usual ones. Um, life's radically changed radically um for me i mean i've worked in an office my whole life my own offices with my own team and while i had semi-flexible hours i'd still stuck to one location and i think once i'd improved my health and realized you know seen the patterns of what you need for health 
Mm, I sold my previous companies and started from nothing again and um, almost nothing. And um, so in terms of mindset, it, it installed the mindset of there's a way around everything. It's just a matter of finding it even more so. Um, I wanted to release myself of having to be in one location the whole time. So I said I wanted to be in multiple countries around the world. I wanted to optimize my health. I wanted to spread awareness of what other people can do to optimize their health as well. Um, and, I, and I didn't want to spend my savings on doing it. No, I've hit the first three of those. <laughs> um, I'm still, still trying to monetize it, but, um, but that's the, the least important. So um, really, I'm location independent. I'm in, you know, 30 different cities a year minimum and a poster stuck in one office and I have a team around the world and friends all around the world a poster just in a little office in the centre of London so I mean really in terms of that and my health um, my health flourishes because I can be near the sea I have clean air I'm grounding every day I buy the best food I possibly can and prioritise buying the best food opposed to the best belts or suits or <laughs> the best shoes um, less materialistic for sure and um, enjoy my own time opposed to dreading having quiet time to myself. So it's really, you know, from a mental, a psychological aspect and from the health aspect and from the physical location aspect and the spiritual one as well, it's a massive shift. It like, it's almost like I'm a different person. I mean, 15 years ago, I was smoking 35 cigarettes a day. <laughs> yeah. Um, to, yeah. It, it's it's incredible, and and my my question kind of to that becomes: What does it take to bring the masses to? Eat? Let me back up. You talk about how the community within like the biohacking space or this it, it's it's become very fashionable. It's become very fashionable to speak about, very fashionable to talk about. Kind of get on a bandwagon and say, "Oh, I I wear blue light blocking glasses at night, but I still stay up until." 1 a.m. in the morning. Um, I, uh, I I take the the nootropics and I uh, dabble in a lot of the uh, the high end NAC supplements and a lot of these things that are supposed to create longevity and optimize us. However, I still have uh, takeout five days a week, and it's it's looking at the the sexy top of the pyramid stuff rather than looking after the holistic uh solid big data um habit changes that require true health optimization what do you think it's going to take to be able to bring that more mainstream and take the sexiness out of it and actually apply something that's more purposeful actionable and uh intentional in these types of changes um, i feel like i'm working on that um already and i think about three years ago, it uh, must be mid-2018, um, I kind of set out, like one thing that is very apparent in the biohacking space specifically is that it's generally expensive. It's uh, perceived as for the rich kids uh, that don't need to work. Um, and so when I relabeled it to health optimization, actually it was very strategic on my part. It's like when we stopped people on Oxford Street in London, which is the busiest shopping street in Europe, and said to them, do you want to biohack yourself? <laughs> we had less than a tenth of a percent say yes. And in fact, most people didn't even know what it was, and it was around that number. Um, when we said, do you want to optimize your health? We had 95% of people said yes, a health or performance. 4% of people said no, but a loved one, and 1% roughly of people just pushed us out of the way because they were busy London work people just get out my way thinking that we're trying to get money. So the point is, is biohacking has a very small reach, but a, an amazing niche. Health optimization is the goal and people know what that goal is. They are one in the same thing. Um, so really to bring it more mainstream and more of a lifestyle, that's what I'm doing with health optimization. And I think the other thing is, is because it's perceived as very expensive, you know, you can buy a, um, a red light stack for, you know, 500 to a thousand bucks. Um, or um, 
you know, a hyperbaric oxygen chamber for 25,000 bucks plus. Um, but really, the pattern I noticed was that every single biohack had a natural equivalent. And so the, the line I often use is uh, we're using technology to mimic a natural environment in an unnatural world. And so, for instance, if you're if you need a hyperbaric oxygen chamber, well, that's because you haven't practiced your breath work and you might be mouth breathing. So compounded negative uh, uh, growth, <laughs> compound theory, but basically in the negative is if you're not breathing properly, you have bad posture, then you'll be starved of oxygen partially over a period of time. So something like hyperbaric oxygen therapy will boost you back up, get you back to baseline, but you'll still need to fix your breathing. So that's where nature, if you're actually doing breath work, you can do biohacking with your breath work. And it's the same with red light therapy. If you're not seeing sunrise or sunset, uh, and you're light deficient, then you can use devices to replicate that to speed up healing and things. So really, Mother Nature is amazing. We evolved as we are for a reason um, in the environment with the things around us that we have and the things that are killing us are the things that we didn't evolve with. Um, but we can use biohacks to bring us back up to speed. An example would be if, magne if broccoli, for instance, is deficient in magnesium these days, um, and we're still eating broccoli, we're going to be deficient in magnesium potentially. So supplementing with magnesium could be classed as a biohack. Um, you know, you could eat a ton more broccoli, <laughs> granted, but, you know, a supplement really does fast track things. So really all we're doing is mimicking nature in some way. And I think the awareness around it to, to round off on that is that more and more people are realizing it because it is becoming more and more mainstream. They're not necessarily calling it biohacking, but you just have to go on to you know, Instagram and, and type in red light therapy or hyperbaric oxygen therapy or you know, Wim Hof breath work, any of these things. All these are biohacks for, to a biohacker, but maybe not to you know, Auntie Jane at home who does breath work because she knows that her brain comes alive every morning if she does after her coffee. So. You know, I think it, I think it is happening. And I think the other thing is that with current pandemics, people are more focused on what they can do for their health. I mean, some people do see that as a jab that they need to improve their health instead of the lifestyle changes. And that's fine by me. I'm not for or against it by any means, whatever people want to go with. But I think what my point is here is that people are realizing that they do need to take control in some way of their health. What that, what that is, I don't know. Um, and I think 99% of the world is, <laughs> is in that mindset now. You, you bring up a really good point, and it's that nature gives us everything that we need. And for a lot of us, our lifestyles have done so that we've strangle choked the, uh, the, the, the natural gifts that the world and nature gives us to enhance our health and choke them out because of how busy we are, because of our habits, because of the way we live, our lifestyles, the choices we make. And we look for fast tracks, the, uh, like you said, the supplements, the, uh, the, the, the quick biohacks to get us back to baseline, where in actuality, if we just changed our behaviors slightly, it actually optimizes us in a better way, which once we start supplementing or using some of these other tools, it'll take us above and beyond where we actually would, would be at a regular basis. And I'm, I'm curious because again, you, you talk about the, uh, the Instagram influencers and how it's a, this, this whole space is very sexy. It's very fashionable. People want to be seen. They want to be heard. They want to be get noticed. And a big thing I always say is um, play your game, not the guru's game, because everybody's telling you what you should do. I, you should do this because it worked for me. You should do this because it's, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's cool right now. It's in, it's the new fad, but rather in, in your, and, and again, I've given our listeners a lot of ways in which they can figure out what their, what their game is, what truly matters to them. Uh, again, whether it's a boot band, whether it's an aura ring, whether it's, uh, um, using heart rate monitoring, whether it's uh, gut biome testing, DNA testing, you name it, we've, we've gone across the gamut, but I'm curious in your, uh, opinion and, and, in, and in your expertise, what do you suggest people do in order to figure out what it is that they need personally in order to establish a new baseline of habit so that they're not going and just doing another random act, 
that may or may not benefit them. As to the example you gave of the of the blue light glasses, one person they wear three hours before bed, perfect. They got uh, they doubled their uh, their uh, their REM or slow wave sleep uh, versus somebody else does the same thing and there's no change. It, it obviously has an impact on one person. It doesn't have it on the other. What is your suggestion in helping people figure out which habits are going to optimize them the best? What an amazing question. And it leads me perfectly into, um, actually, I, I recently built a course on exactly this because so many people have said to me, and I, I've only got about, I say only, I guess it's quite a lot nowadays, 60-ish uh, thousand followers on Instagram. But even when I was at about 5,000, I would be asked every day, where do I start? What do I do? I'm completely lost with all this stuff everywhere. So I've been asked, you know, thousands of thousands of times in fact i i've got a template to reply when someone says where do i start i put start here and then it pre-populates a whole load of text um there are basics and fundamentals that need to be put in place for every single human being on this planet and i call them fundam the fundamentals of health and without them we can't flourish we just can't um so Regardless of all of these other biohacks, you know, whether hyperbaric oxygen therapy works for someone or red light, uh, blue blocking glasses or red light therapy or whatnot, if people don't have these basics in place, they're not going to work right. They're not going to work right. Um, and I, I won't bore you with all of them in detail, but just to give you a quick skip through and you can, you know, choose to dig into any of them um, is sleep optimization, or should I say it's more about circadian rhythm, optimizing your day uh, to optimize your night. And that means, you know, waking at a certain time, sleeping at a certain time, eating before a certain time, and these all have biological reasons to do so. Um, hydrating correctly, you know, we, we evolved drinking stream water, which is mineral rich, not tap water that's full of chemicals or bottled water that is mineral deficient. Um, you know, we evolved uh, moving and um, exercising, not sitting on the sofa watching Netflix every day. We evolved with natural light or sunlight, depending on our heritage, you know, different points on the globe, um, which meant that different tones of skin would need different amounts of light and we wouldn't be covered in clothes in a house with fake blue light. So therefore, you know, light is energy for us um, and that helps fuel our mitochondria uh, for energy production. Um, we didn't evolve with processed foods. We just didn't, you know, and even if people say, oh, there's no studies proving that pro processed food is bad for us. The point is, is if we look at the data, we evolved, <laughs> we evolved with natural food. <laughs> we did not evolve with processed food and chemicals. And we are at the sickest point in our, in our whole history. You know, we're living longer, but we're sicker for longer. Um, so yeah, eating naturally, um we also wouldn't necessarily be stressed worried about paying the car insurance or having to go to the shops or you know paying bills so our cortisol wouldn't be spiking so frequently you know we, then when we actually had a real physical threat and cortisol stops so many different things in the body from happening because it always thinks it needs to run away from a a threat therefore you know we don't heal properly so there's you know there's the fundamentals of health really that need putting in place and uh, the final one of relevance is earthing um, or grounding which is getting more and more popular now i'm very very happy to say um, and it's the practice of just getting your shoes off and standing in the grass or on the beach or in some soil um, and connecting with the earth because there's a flow of free electrons which um, neutralize or uh, yeah neutralize free radicals in the body uh, which reduces inflammation and promotes healing and it, it main, maintains or rebalances our electrical system and we are electrical creatures so you know having these things in place means the body can flourish without them we can't and there's no point taking another supplement or um, using another device or any of these things unless you've got these basics in place and it's so clear that you have made a life out of this and you are certainly somebody who lives in ownership. You went from working in a small office, sitting for most of the day to now traveling to over 30 cities throughout a year. 
and living the lifestyle that you want while having the health that you want as well. Now, this is one of our favorite questioner questions that our listeners love, love to, to hear. What to you, in a word or a short phrase, does ownership mean? Mm. Hmm. Ownership is a very raw word already. I mean, it's to be accountable to it, to say, I'm not going to rely on anyone or anything else. I'm going to make this happen. Um, uh, I think actually I've got a, a tattoo on my wrist that it mean is an alchemist symbol hybrid, and it means I can do it. Um, and it reminds me every day. Actually, it's programmed into my brain now. But um, yeah, if you want something, make it happen. Go get it. Like you can do it. Um, so it's being accountable, being responsible for yourself, and making it happen. Um, and not letting any excuse or any mm, self-limiting belief or anyone else around you convince you otherwise. That's it. Ownership is making it happen. Mm. Yeah. Love that. Tim, it's, I, I love having these conversations with people, um, uh, intelligent like yourself, being able to really dive into this. It's it's a huge passion of mine. It's something that I've given my entire life and my entire career to. And um, it's, uh, it, it's it, I, I love that there's other professionals out there like you that um, are helping spread this word because it's, it, it's the people that we impact. It's the influence in which we, uh, in which we help in this world that, uh, that, that truly provides that, that fulfillment and um, and ultimate happiness at the end of the day and, and helping people live longer, healthier, happier, um, uh, and, and more optimized is, is really what it's all about. So, um, thank you for, for doing what you do and, and, uh, where can people find you? Where can people interact with you? Um, and, uh, and get exposed to more of your work. Yeah. So, um, I could be found on Instagram, mainly Tim Biohacker, who isn't on Instagram mainly these days. <laughs> Um, also, um, the summit is uh, healthoptimization.com, and that's with an S, not a Z, because I'm British and we're awkward. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, Instagram is the best place for me. Fantastic. So guys, as you go forward, it's, it's not about one thing. It's not about getting the newest fad, the newest trend, uh, jumping into the newest supplement routine. It's about those baseline habits, about health optimization. It's what do you do consistently? What do you learn about yourself? What data do you start grabbing to know what it is that you need to do that's going to take you from A, where you are today, to B, where you want to be tomorrow? And the more that you can understand, the more influential you can get, it's ultimately going to create this long-term sustainability of health optimization, the true feel of what you want to do because the more aware that you can be with your body the more uh the more impact you can have on yourself the more guidance you can have the more confident you can be to know to seek a greater answer to seek more clarity so that you can ultimately take yourself from this feeling of tired and sick to this feeling of vibrant and energized by doing this help op health optimization remember success is different so be different and own it. We'll see you next week.